Hello and welcome you all. Dear students, today's topic is traveling wave tube that is TWT. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this. Explain the constructional details and operation of traveling wave tube or the question may be like this. What is the slow wave structure and explain its use in the traveling wave tube. So before discussing this construction and working of traveling wave tube, first we'll discuss what is a slow wave structure. As the name indicates, this is the structure which is used to reduce down the speed so that there will be proper interaction between the two fields. So this structure is called slow wave structure. One of the slow wave structure is a helical coil like this. The slow wave structure can be in the form of zigzag fashion, but presently, we are using a helical coil. This distance is called pitch of the helix. Now, at one end of this helical coil, RF field is applied. At this point, some cathode is used, which is uh, generating the electron beam. This electron beam travels in a forward direction. Two magnets are shown in the diagram. These magnets are used to properly align the electron beam. Okay, so, uh, whenever see there is a speed difference between the electron beam and the RF field but there should be proper interaction between the two that means between the uh, electron beam and the RF field so the RF field is retarded by making use of this structure because you can well uh, see in this diagram here at the input side RF field is applied this RF field has to travel a longer path to reach at the output compared to the path followed by the electron beam so there will be proper interaction between the two fields this is the major use of uh, slow wave structure because of the slow wave structure the velocity of RF field uh, gets affected and there will be proper interaction now there is one term which is uh, phase velocity VP dash which is given by PC upon pi D, where P is the pitch of helix, C is the speed of light, we know it is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second, D is the distance between these uh, two gas uh, glass cylinders. We are using uh, two glass cylinders, one at the upper end and one at the lower end. So D is the distance between them. The phase velocity is also given by another equation omega upon beta. Beta is the phase shift, omega is angular frequency. We know it is 2 pi f, which is also given by psi into c. C is the speed of light, psi is the pitch angle. Now, the different groups are traveling with a certain velocity, which is called a group velocity. The formula to calculate group velocity is dabba by dabba beta. Beta is the phase shift of omega. Omega is angular frequency. One important concept is that the period of slow wave structure, this structure, helical structure is called a slow wave structure. The period of slow wave structure should be equal to the pitch of the helix. So this is about the slow wave structure which is used in traveling wave tube. Now let us discuss the construction and working of traveling wave tube that is TWT. See basic principle remains same. There should be formation of bunches so that electrons whenever they are forming bunches uh, the they are getting amplified so you are getting amplified uh, micro signal at the output this is the basic principle as we discussed this is the helical coil this is helical coil which is acting as a slow wave structure we have already discussed we have to make use of slow wave structure so that there will be, should be proper interaction between the two fields now at one end, we are applying RF input signal at one end of this helical coil. At the other end, we are getting amplified output. So here I have written RF output signal. At the input side, the cathode is shown. The function of cathode is uh, similar to the function of cathode what we studied in reflex clastron or two cavity clastron. It is used to generate the electron beam. These are the focusing electrodes. So this cathode generates electron beam which moves in the forward direction. At the other end, we have used one collector. The voltage applied to this collector is more positive. So acceleration of this electron beam takes place. Now we want this electron beam should be at the center, should be along the axis of structure. So to obtain this, Two magnets are placed one at the upper end and another at the lower end 
we have shown two waveguides one input waveguide and one output waveguide at input and output side we want to couple uh, we want to apply rf input signal at one end of the helical coil so to couple this rf input signal rf input waveguide is used whereas we have placed one collector at the output side to couple it uh, this output waveguide is used now how the uh, working of this structure takes place as we discussed rf input signal is applied at one end of this helical structure consider this diagram this shows the variation of electric field so the variation is like this it is following the sinusoidal path this part indicates that the field is increasing from this point up to this point this is say zero uh, level of zero so the field is reducing whenever some electrons are entering whenever the field is reducing those electrons gets retarded whereas some electrons which enters whenever the field is increasing they gets accelerated due to speed match speed mismatch there is a process of bunching that means the bunches of electrons are formed now another important concept is those electrons which are entering whenever electric field is retarding their speed gets reduced so such electrons transfers their energy to the field and in turn the field transfers the energy to the micro signal so amplification of micro signal takes place number of electrons which are entering in the retarding field are more than those electrons which are entering whenever the electric field is accelerating so amplification process takes place the different uh, bunches are formed and signal gets amplified as we move from one turn of helical coil to the next turn the bunching process goes on increasing goes on improving so at the output uh, where we have written rf output you are getting an amplified signal so this is the way how uh, this uh, traveling wave tube works consider a numerical a traveling wave tube twt has following characteristics first beam voltage which is denoted by v0 it is 3 kilo volts that is 3000 volts beam current i0 10 milli amperes that means 10 into 10 raised to minus 3 amperes operating frequency is 8.5 gigahertz we know that it is in given in gigahertz so 8.5 into 10 raised to 9 hertz circuit length that is denoted by n which is 42 z0 that is characteristic impedance which is 120 ohm determine first part gain parameter second part phase constant third part power gain again such numericals are uh, simple formula based numericals so first is gain parameter it is denoted by c formula is i0 z0 upon 4 v0 bracket raised to 1 by 3 you just have to simply put the values do remember you need to convert these values 10 milliampere is 10 into 10 raised to minus 3 then v0 uh, z0 is 120 ohm 4 times v0 v0 is beam voltage which is 3 kilo that is 3000 volt if you put these values answer of gain parameter is 0.0215 next is phase constant it is denoted by ke so formula is 2 pi upon v dash into f this v dash is the velocity due to the velocity modulation process which is expressed as v dash is 5.93 into 10 raised to 5 square root of v0 this is the standard formula so v0 is uh, again 3 kilo volt that is 3000 so first you need to calculate v dash if you put it in this formula this f is again given in gigahertz you need to convert it in hertz 8.5 into 10 raised to 9 so answer of phase uh, constant is 1644.36 next is gain this is again the standard formula to calculate the gain minus 9.54 plus 47.3 n into c n is the circuit length whose value is given in the question which is 42 c is not speed of light in this case it is the gain parameter which is 0.0215 so answer of uh, gain power gain is 33.17 Next part is comparison between Klystron and uh, traveling wave tube amplifier TWTA. First is Klystron is narrow band device. It is a broadband device. Then cavity resonators are used in Klystron for the velocity modulation purpose. Here cavity resonators are not used. In Klystron interaction takes place only in the cavity gap. Whereas in TWTA interaction is taking place along entire length of the tube. Then Klystron makes use of cavities. In this case, slow wave structures are used. 
output power is low in this case high output is generated next parameter is field related to signal is in the buncher cavity in case of a klystron whereas rf signal is moving along the entire axis of the tube in twt klystrons are mainly used in laboratory purposes for experiment for performing experiments whereas twt is used for high power applications like radar so dear students that's it for today's session so thank you thanks a lot for watching this video